Good grief. If you've ever had to do this, this is not fun when you've got a lot of wires that are going to be exposed to the elements. You need to make sure that them connections are good. They're not going to get a bunch of water inside them. If you follow these few steps that I put in this video, I'm going to try to make it easier for you and keep some of that money down inside your pocket. As you can tell, we've got a boatload of wires that got to be put together. And if you get on Amazon or eBay or anything like that, you can buy these things. These little soldering connections in the center of them. You get you an old heat gun from down at the old Harbor Freight or wherever. You can get these things for about 20 bucks. And you got some wire cutters, heat shrink, or you can buy the tubes like this. And you can also buy one of these. This is a dual purpose tool. It actually lets out propane and makes a heat source, but you never know when something's gonna tick you off really bad and you need to burn something down. So even if you're not doing this wiring, keep one of these or a lighter too. It's a little bit easier to carry than this big old thing. I'm gonna use some of these wire strippers. Now I have two different styles, the vice grip style, and I have this style, which is a Klein, I believe. I actually like these ones a lot better. They seem to strip just about anything, unless I was doing like a 10 gauge or smaller, then these ones would come in much handier. But these seem to be very versatile and very useful. So I have a couple steps and a couple procedures that I use and I'm connecting a boatload of wires like this situation right here. First off, I put my heat shrink on. Even though I'm working with somewhere between a 16 to a 20 gauge wire, I actually use the red ones, which are designed for larger wires. Actually, I should check myself before I wreck myself on them wire connections. Okay, so I use the 16 to 14 gauge blue ones instead of what the actual wire size is, which is 18 to 22. The reason that I do that is because once you go to get in there and you put these wires together, it becomes a little bit difficult to use the exact same gauge. If you have the longer style heat shrink like this, so I'll take a piece of my heat shrink and I'll measure it about a quarter inch away about where my finger starts to begin right there and I'll cut it so it overhangs a little bit. But I have a little trick and we strip these off and we're gonna go ahead and strip one of these off. I'll actually strip way more than if you were using just a regular style butt connector. Oh, I'll take the two wires and a lot of times what we'd used to do in the past, we would put them together and make like a T, squeeze them together, but because we need these to go through the butt connectors, we do this and make sure that you pull this one side over here and then this other side down here like this and wrap them together. That way you'll be soldering right here in the center connecting them two halves. With that, it almost looks like the wires were meant to be together. Just took off the casing. Now we'll slide this over here. Now we wanna make sure our solder is in the center of there. Then we take a heat gun with the flat bent over like that. We got this, which wasn't very cheap, $40 Harbor Freight heat gun here. I use setting number two, setting five up there. It does get hot. Now with everything pulled out of the way the best I could, even on the lower settings, this will generate a lot of heat and you can melt a lot of things around it. I have pulled my wires out of the way the absolute best I could and moved them as far away as possible. Then I'll take and blow on it. I repeat this process about 25 more times. There's a lot of blowing this day. It will discolor as I blow. You can tell the plastic and the solder are cooling down because it will become milky white. I'll take my heat shrink and I'll slide it over my tubing. Then once I've got that heat shrink slid over there the way that I want it, take my torch. No, this is not the moment of the video where you get the smoke crack. I'm sorry. And the torch just works quicker and it's much easier than dealing with the heat gun. Torch would heat up the center of the solder too much and almost melt it away. Now I've only got a bunch more to do, but I've already done a bunch. So I'm nearing the finish line. Boy, oh boy, that's a lot better now. If this video was helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and give me them sweet old thumbs up. And if you've got a question for old Clayboy, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I can help you maybe with your automobile, but I can't help you with that old baby mama drama. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next of them. Be the first of you. God bless and have the best of days.